The elegant gray-crowned crane has faced a sharp decline in Kenya from an estimated population of 35,000 in the 1980s to less than 10,000 at the moment. The shrinking population resulting from the reclamation of swamps that were key to their survival as well as the effects of climate change on their key breeding areas. Emily Chabet was on Lake Ol Bolsalat in Nyandarwa, one of the main breeding points of the now endangered species and brings us the following report on majestic beauty headed down the path of extinction. The beauty and elegance of this tall and enigmatic bird is irresistible. Its spectacular head, golden crown resting royally on a patched red base with beautiful eyes and brown, white and grey feathers complements its body. The grey-crowned crane, which is the most beautiful amongst the 15 species of crane, is facing extinction in Kenya, one of the countries hosting a majority of the species population. This is Lake Olbolo Sat in Nyandarwa County, the home and key breeding ground for these birds over the years. More than 900 of these birds have called this place home for years, but over the last few years, their population has been sharply declining due to the effects of climate change that has seen the wetland turn semi-arid. The decline in number of grey crown crane is worrying scientists and conservationists who are out to save the bird. In 1988, there were 35,000 cranes in Kenya. But as we speak, the estimation, the last session that we did in 2019, the population of the grey crown crane in Kenya is between 8,000 and 10,000. And within the East African region, this population has declined by over 80%. Simple calculation is that where we had 100 cranes, only 20 cranes are remaining. A place that was once full of activities including fishing, boat rides and bird watching is now a pale of shadow of its former self. A few birds flying in with the hope of getting water or a cool spot for breeding. A conducive habitat for the breeding of grey crown cranes needs to be one meter deep and vegetation which is mainly reeds that are high enough to hide the bird from external threats. Data from bird experts at Lake Olbolosat reveals that the breeding pattern of the bird that normally breeds between June through to April of the next year has been going down drastically. According to a report by conservationists, in the year 2015-2016 breeding season, no chicks were recorded, yet there were several nests, a situation that prompted massive awareness of the dangers of poaching eggs. During the 2016-2017 season, only one chick was recorded. 2017-2018 season, 56 chicks were recorded. In the 2018-2019 breeding season, 94 chicks were recorded. And in the last breeding season, no chicks were recorded. It had been reported that tens of eggs are trampled on by heads that flock these wetlands. This species was not uh, successful in breeding. Especially there was a kind of the eggs correction in other areas. There were kind of a, a poaching of birds, you know, the live cranes. And in another side, there was a disturbance during the breeding season. So you find that at the end of the season, the population of the cranes in Likoroborosat was going down. Cranes, like many other aquatic species, are indicators of the state of the environment. The disappearance of this species indicates a deterioration of the status of our wetlands, which should be of concern to all, given the myriad of environmental goods and services wetlands provide. The bird has been listed as endangered, meaning that the species is likely to become extinct if no serious mitigation measures are taken. With wetlands is that they're being cleared, being cleared for agriculture, being cleared for development. Uh, we are not against development, it has to occur. But possibly one of the things we need to put in place are the environmental impact assessments that can help us. So when you're clearing a wetland or you want to clear an area near a wetland, you will know how you're going to affect your wetland and you'll be able to put in mitigation measures. We have a strategy in terms of fencing and mapping out our, our, our wetlands uh, through our uh, entity NEMA. 
We are working with other government agencies to make sure that all the wetlands in the country, over 5,000 of them, are fenced and rehabilitated. And one of them is the lake that you've indicated in Yandarwa, which is so critical uh, for, for the sustainability of the specific part species as you've indicated. It's a good breeding ground. In fact, they call it it's a maternity for, for quite a number of birds there. Uh, and uh, it is uh, out of human activities that the, the lake is degrading and, and, and it is getting extinct. Encroachment of wetlands by farmers, private developers and animal grazers has largely contributed to the diminishing of the lake. They're talking about the grey crown crane, Likol Bolosat actually has 300 species of, of birds. So you're actually destroying a habitat for all those species that actually depend on that lake. And I think worse still is that then you find a lot of conflicts. There are a lot of hippos that live in that lake called Bolosat. So if you're going to destroy the lake, where are they going to go to? They actually need that lake to survive. You then find them where the humans are. And that, of course, will not be um, a good situation. According to the Principal Secretary, the Ministry of Environment Engineer Festus Ngeno, the government is working on implementation of policies surrounding land use and protected areas that has been neglected in the past. Quite a number of wetlands have not been cassated. So as we do the management plans, as we rehabilitate, it's for us to cassate for future posterity. And therefore, we are not doing new laws. They are there. And we are going to just refocus and engage the communities. I know quite a number of communities have had their livelihoods. Uh, from the from the from the from the same riparian or from the same lakes, but as it gets, it gets extinct, they need to understand that there will be nothing for everyone. Satima escarpment, which is under Kenya Forest Service, was once full of trees which acted as playing ground and refuge for the birds. But now, billows of smoke, a clear indication of charcoal burning, has left the escarpment bare. We are going to rehabilitate. You know, when, when, where, where it was a forest. Those ones were cassated, and therefore we are just going there to do the the growing of the trees, and that is the first um, uh, one of the first instances or uh, opportunities for us to be able to hit our 15 billion tree campaign as directed by the president. Birds are a sign of a healthy, functioning ecosystem. They are predators, pollinators, seed dispersers, scavengers, and ecosystem engineers. When we have the good season for the breeding, when you have uh, you know the suitable habitat for the breeding, we monitor more than 100 pairs of cranes. Maybe every year or every season we are able to produce, maybe those 100 pairs, they produce one chick, one chick, one chick. We have, that's a flock of 100. Their highly mobile nature means they can act as a link between distant ecosystems, cycling nutrients and facilitating the dispersal of other organisms. The extensive, dry and now dusty bed of Lake Olbolosat acted as maternity for these endangered species. It hosted hundreds of nests. It also home for animals like hippopotamus. The dwindling water levels in the last four years has threatened their survival here. Calls have been made for the county government and national government to ensure protection of wetlands for future generations. Emily Chebetsi, Design TV, Olbolosat, Inyandarwa County.